myself a little bit of a challenge this week. So sometimes it's really good to use up everything that you have and not go out shopping. And it's so tempting, isn't it? When you go in the supermarket just for a couple of things and you end up with like a massive shop and you spent another hundred quid. So I thought what I'll do is I'll do a little inventory of what I've got in my cupboards, in my fridge and in my freezer and see if I can create some family meals this week that are gonna suit all of us. If you've watched my videos before, you'll know that I am gluten free, so they've got to be suitable for me as well. And I think that I can do it. I've had a look what I've got and I will show you my list and what my plan is of what I'm going to make this week. And right now I'm just going for a walk. I've um, noticed that up the lane here, this is where I normally go for my daily walk, that there is um, a house up here that's got some eggs for sale. So I know that I am then spending a little bit, but I thought, you know, if I can make a little bit more, and it gives me a walk, then it's a win-win, isn't it? So just gonna go and buy some eggs. Annoyingly, my car is in the garage again, so I've got no car. So that's a part of the inspiration for this week as well. I don't know how long I'm not gonna have a car for. So I thought if I can do things where I can walk, that's gonna be great. And obviously it's good for my health and fitness. I'm a little bit out of breath to be walking quite fast. And also, you know, if I can use up things that we already have, then it's gonna save us some money. And it, you know, it makes me get a little bit more creative as well because you know, you can get stuck in a rut and as I said, spend way too much money in the supermarket when you don't need to. So tonight's dinner I have already planned is a just really simple one pan dish, which is ideal. Less washing up, less hassle, really quick and easy to make. And it is a curry, but it is in one pan with the rice and it's really tasty. So the rice gets so much flavour and I'm using korma tonight with coconut milk. So it's gonna be a sort of one pan chicken korma curry. Here we are, eggs for sale. Let's hope that they have got some. Box of six is one pound 50. Let's have a look. Two boxes, absolutely perfect. I've got three pounds. So I've worked out a plan of what I'm gonna make for this week for our actual dinners. So tonight is gonna to be the one pan chicken korma style curry with the rice all in one pan, so really, really simple. I'm also gonna make a sesame hoisin salmon for one of the evenings. And in my cupboard, I had some peri peri nando sauce. I've made this before and it's so good that I've got to share it with you. And again, it is a one pan meal. It's with chicken and rice and it's got vegetables in it. And with the nando sauce, it is perfection. I'm gonna make pasta one night because I've got some in my store cupboard. And this is gonna be a creamy roasted pepper pasta. And to finish the week, I'm gonna make a tuna pasta bake. It's a real classic, it's really easy, and it's one of my favorites because I absolutely adore tuna. I wrote my list before I even thought about doing this video and what I'm planning to do this week. I was just really doing a little tally of what I've got in the freezer, in the cupboard, and in the fridge. So I realize it's really, really messy, but it's obviously just for me. So that's exactly what I do, nice and simple. So there's my inventory, and now we've just got to use it all. I've seasoned those chicken thighs and we're going to pop them in the pan and they're going to go in skin side down. We want to get this skin lovely and crispy. The chicken skin has loads of salt and pepper on it, so it's got tons of flavour and we just need to remove that chicken skin. We're not going to waste this, we're going to actually dice this up and use this on top of the chicken as like a crispy topping that's gonna really season this dish. Here is our gorgeous crispy skin. Listen to that. So now we just want to chop this up. Into the chicken, we're gonna add the onions. This gives them a couple of minutes so that they can soften with that chicken. Paste is now working its way into those pieces of chicken and the onions to make a gorgeous base for our rice when that's ready. We want to give this probably around 10 minutes in the pan. I'm just turning the chicken over now and that has coated it lovely. So just leave that now for another 10 minutes. I'm just going to mash these up into the chicken. And this is going to create a lovely sauce for our curried chicken. 
This is starting to thicken very quickly, which is exactly what we want it to do. And then we can pop in our rice. In with the rice. And what you want to do is just stir this in and let it get a little bit toasty. So just be patient with it. It takes a little while, but it is worth it because it's gonna really add to the flavor of the dish. Next, you'll need to pour in your water. Give that another little mix around just to make sure that the rice is actually in the water. Turn your chicken over like so. Just remove that rice off the top. And now let's get a lid on that. And let's give that 12 minutes to cook. That rice should be beautifully fluffy and the chicken really tender. 12 minutes are now up. And as you can see, we've nearly absorbed all the liquid here. Sorry about the steam, get rid of that. Now to pop in our frozen peas. So just scatter those around. And we want some coconut milk in here as well. So I've removed the chicken and I've just shredded that up and I'm just popping it back in. It's just personal preference. You can serve it whole, but we like to have it without the bone on the plate. So here it is, totally cooked. Like I said, you can choose whether to shred your chicken up or not, but we wanted to. And I'm gonna serve myself up a lovely portion of this. And on top of that goes that beautiful crispy chicken skin that we made earlier. And that is a very tasty dish. And then we've got our ingredients set out here. So I'll run you through it, but let's start by measuring out some butter and chopping the chocolate. Into the butter, I'm just gonna weigh out the sugar. So I've got some dark brown sugar to start with. It's gonna make this so rich and delicious. And the next ingredient is some caster sugar. You can use granulated sugar if you prefer or whatever you've got in the cupboard. Now we just wanna mix that up. And that sugar, sugar should dissolve quite easily because the butter is warm and melted and this makes the base of our brownie batter. Meanwhile, just add some vanilla, pop that in. This is a really bitter, dark chocolate, so you don't need all that much of it. I'm just gonna chop it into pieces. Of course, if you can get hold of some chocolate chips and use those instead, but I didn't have any today, so just gonna chop it up. Now you want to put your eggs into this our lovely fresh eggs here so three of those are going in and just whisk that in another dry ingredients and i'm gonna sieve in the cocoa powder again just sieve that into the bowl pour in your chocolate chips and all that's left to do is just combine this slowly and carefully we don't want to overwork it too much but we want all of that to be smooth we're gonna pop that in a preheated oven at 180 degrees. This is gonna bake for sort of 30, 35 minutes. Wow, just wow. These are absolutely stunning. They taste, I already had a square. They taste absolutely amazing. Tonight I'm making the very easy and simple sesame hoisin salmon and it is a real winner in our house, it's super delicious. I'm gonna show you how to make this one. So I've just got an oven tray and I've popped my salmon in here. I'm doing this for two people this evening and we're gonna use some hoisin sauce. Just gonna pour that over. We're gonna mix this all together with the ingredients. So you could put this in a bowl to start with and just put all the ingredients in, whichever way you prefer to do it. Also, we need some brown sugar, pop that in, some soy sauce, and some white rice vinegar. Just gonna measure that out so I don't put too much. This is a very pourable, open lid, and my goodness, it will be everywhere. So, in that goes. Sesame oil, which I absolutely adore. So again, we don't want too much of that. So just gonna measure that. In with that. As you can see, we're getting lots of flavor into here. 
This has just out of my freezer. So this is some ginger that's already diced up, that was frozen. I've just defrosted it. You could use it from frozen. It would be absolutely fine. Or you could chop up some fresh. I want to sprinkle over a little bit of salt. And then for some heat, some crushed chilies. Really, this is personal taste. Depends how spicy you like it. And then this can go into the oven and that's gonna go in for 15 minutes on a super high temperature. These are gonna be super tasty and there's no way that you can add all of that and these not be so delicious. In goes the salmon for 15 minutes. And here is this beautiful oriental style salmon cooked absolutely perfectly and how easy was that? You could even put this in an air fry if you prefer to do it, not to do it in the oven. And I've just put it on a bed of brown rice and peas because this has got so much flavour and the sweet peas with the nutty rice is going to work perfectly. All that's left to do is sprinkle a little bit of spring onions on the top as a garnish and that is a perfect dinner. The salmon was really moist and flaky and really soft beautiful such a gorgeous oriental style marinade for that give it a go and let me know in the comments what you think tonight i'm making a nando's chicken and rice which is a beautiful one pan dish and it's really easy so i've got some chicken breasts here which i'm going to flatten i've got some red pepper chopped up tomato puree i'm going to make up some stock with this cube i've got garlic some olive oil spray, some peri peri nando sauce, which I've gone with the medium one. And in here I've got rice and peas and then some white onion, really simple. I'm gonna begin by giving the chicken a good bash. So I'm gonna use a rolling pin. Just wanna flatten it so it cooks more evenly and a bit quicker. Gonna add my spray oil into the pan. So one, two, and we want to now just cook this fully and then remove it and we can then carry on with the rest of the recipe. Just going to also season the chicken, so a little bit of pepper going on and a little bit of salt as well. We don't want the chicken to be bland. Also on the chicken, I'm going to pop a little bit of paprika. Obviously this is optional, you don't have to do this. And then some oregano as well. Just going to turn this chicken over. That's browned nicely. Now that the chicken is cooked, I'm going to just remove that from the pan. Just pop it on this board. And then there's no need to clean this pan, we'll continue to use this. Pop in some onions and the peppers and some garlic. You want to just give these a few minutes in the pan just to get a little bit of colour and start the cooking process because these will be cooked for longer once we add in the rice, the peas and then our liquid. And into those you want to add your Nando sauce and I've also put my tomato puree in here as well. So let's pour that in. If you like it spicy you can use a bit more and in the description below, I'll, I'll put the full recipe and the amounts and then, yeah, I'll also let you know like how much, you know, if you want it a bit more spicy with a bit more of a kick. I've made this a few times now, so I know the level that we enjoy. All right, let's give that a mix around in the pan. Get that coating the rice. Probably not using the best utensil here, but never mind. And now in with, I've chosen vegetable stock. You could use chicken stock, that would work as well. Look how easy this is. I mean, it's literally one pan. You know, we've, we've cooked the chicken in here. Now we're doing the rest. All I need to do now is just mix this, make sure that it's covered everything with that stock, which it has. Now I'm gonna pop a lid on, like so. Leave that, don't touch it for 15 minutes. So it took a little bit longer than the 15 minutes, I'd say probably about 20 minutes, but we are ready to portion this up. And it is a very lovely big portion. Here we go. And then let's add the chicken on top. And remember that's got the paprika 
and the oregano, salt and pepper on that, so that's full of flavour as well. And that is my one pan Nando's chicken and rice. Tonight's dinner is a really easy, creamy, roasted red pepper pasta. I love this type of meal. It's so simple and it's really versatile. You can add in some chorizo to this or some chicken if you wanted to. But this is what you need. So I'm going with spaghetti, but you can use any pasta you like. This one is gluten free, but it doesn't need to be. I've got some cherry tomatoes just in a tin. Roasted red peppers there, salt and pepper. I've got some basil, you could use dried or this is a frozen one, you could use fresh. I've got olive oil, I've got some frozen onion, you can dice up a fresh if you prefer. Spices are smoked paprika, some crushed chilli flakes and some garlic. And then you can use regular cream or if you're dairy free like me, you can use a single soya alpro version. In the pan, I've started off a little bit of olive oil and some garlic, and then one onion just diced up like so. That's gonna bring the temperature down because that is still frozen. Just gonna cook this for a couple of minutes, just being careful that it's not on too high a heat because we don't want that garlic to burn. Whilst my onions are softening, I'm gonna pop in some smoked paprika, which is beautiful, it gives color and flavor, a bit smoky and sweet, which is really delicious. I'm going to put in some black pepper. Now you want to add some crushed chilies. So this is really personal preference. Depends how spicy you like your food. And then a small pinch of salt. The next thing to pop in is these beautiful red peppers that just come out of the jar. And they are super sweet. And they're lovely and soft. So we're just going to combine that in with the onion that we've already got in here doesn't matter that they're quite chunky because we're actually going to blitz this sauce. And then into that, my tin cherry tomatoes. And those cherry tomatoes are going to be so sweet and delicious. To add some extra flavour to this, I love basil with any tomato sauce. So in with that gorgeous basil. Now I'm just going to leave this on the hob for maybe five, ten minutes. Just let the flavours combine. Let that reduce down slightly on a medium to high heat. And then we can, in the meantime, cook our pasta. And then when this is ready, we can blitz this down to the most beautiful, silky pepper and tomato sauce. I'm pouring the sauce back into the very messy frying pan, but that's fine. Just so that we can heat that up and it's just easier to pop the pasta straight into here. I'm gonna add a little bit of that cream too. In with that lovely cream, which is just gonna make such a difference to this sauce. I've added the pasta with the cream and the tomato sauce and a tiny little bit of the water that the pasta was cooked in. Look how delicious this dinner is. A little bit of Parmesan on top, beautiful. To begin with, we're gonna add a little bit of this garlic oil. So a tiny bit in here, that's plenty. We've got in here some frozen vegetables. We're gonna pop those into the pan. The garlic oil is really just to give some flavouring. You could use some fresh garlic. Now I'm going in with this stock cube and then we're going to add a splash of boiling water to that. Now that that's dissolved, we're going to go in with a passata, which is just basically sieve tomato, no lumps. In that goes. To add a little kick, we want a tiny bit of chilli powder. This is just a mild one that I'm using. Half a teaspoon of dried herbs going in as well. Give that a good mix. I will then add some salt and pepper also. If you had some fresh basil, that would be nice in here. Got my tin tuna ready in here, because this is where we're gonna put the pasta when it's cooked. In goes the pasta. When my pasta's cooked and I put it in the sauce with the tuna, we're then gonna top it. I love this Eat Lean grated cheese. It melts quite well and is low in calories, high in protein. But also we're gonna add a little bit of this grated mozzarella from Morrison's. The sauce is nice and thick and we're almost ready to assemble. 
tuna is in the sauce, pasta is drained. Let's get that in and mix that together. Oh, yum. Look at this. It's coating that pasta. You can smell the tuna. And we've got some veg in there, so pretty good balanced dinner, I would say. Right, we're going in with the Eat Lean Cheese to start with. You want to be fairly generous with this. Now some of the mozzarella. This has been under the grill and that has melted that cheese perfectly. Now we can serve this.